I've often heard when I was younger that crossing over sports was good for you because it, it allowed certain allowed you to, to develop different muscles and take breaks off different like the same sort of repetitive movement when you were younger to not tear down like tear apart your body as a, at a young age is there truth to that or is it you know there is truth to that absolutely because your brain development is a lot different because you're able to see a picture from a different angle right it's like if you step on a soccer field as a defender mm -hmm. and if you step on a soccer field as a defender you look forward mm -hmm. and if the soccer field if you step on it from the other side, you're a striker, it's a completely different picture. Right. Those movements are different. It's the same thing when you cross over sports. Mm -hmm. That means you can be doing different sports, but you gotta pick one that's gonna actually allow you to be your main sport. Right. And the other one is gonna be like a rec sport. Just mm -hmm. like deload the stress for your body right. and don't take it as serious. Yeah, you know? that's that's what I did with soccer and basketball. Soccer was my main sport and I played a lot of basketball, but it was never at the level that I played soccer, it was always wreck or just pick up with friends. But it was something that allowed me to get to kind of take the stress off the certain those specific soccer movements, like the planting when to go play a long ball. Like Correct. you don't have to do that in basketball, so Correct. it would take the stress off the knee and the hip to plant all the time. Um, which kept me healthy probably throughout most of high school until yeah, throughout most of high school, I didn't really have any injuries, and I, I had teammates that were only one sport, and they would get injured on a very specific, Absolutely. specific thing. That's very true. No, I completely agree with that. And just remember, the other thing is, like, crossing over sports, there's nothing wrong with that. The other thing is, basically, crossing over sports at the same day. Some mm -hmm. kids, I know that they right. go from soccer practice to basketball practice the same day. I mean, yeah. like, is something that is way, they're overdoing it. It's different if you're taking a break off from soccer during off season and you go and play basketball. Right, right. Now you know that your your body is completely loading from in basketball. It's a hard surface. Mm -hmm. You take sharp turns. You put a lot of stress in your ankles. Mm -hmm. Soccer is all kicking. It's right. a lot of kicking into the ball, so the ankle takes a lot of stress. Yeah. So it's a lot of inflammation. It's a lot of impact. It's a lot of stress that goes into those small bones around your feet. Mm -hmm. So in this case, crossing over sports, I would recommend, for instance, like if I do football, mm -hmm. I would do swimming, right? Because there is a non-contact, right. there is non-contact yeah. sport. There is no there's less impact on the joints. Correct, and you develop stuff. completely different musculoskeletal system than what you do with football, right? So now, if you're playing basketball, yeah, you want to look something that's going to be bilateral, a lot of shifting around, mm -hmm. which you have to be able to understand. You will Definitely. be boxing. Right. Why? Because it's the same thing. You will be able to coordinate better handle with the movements. Mm -hmm. You will do karate, something that involves more neuromuscular movements, more right. specifics mm -hmm. than just doing the same over and over uh, drills. Because soccer and basketball drills, many times when you're doing conditions, they're about the same. Yeah, they're very similar. Very similar. So you overdo it, you overwork in the same mm -hmm. body parts. So what sort of things, when you see like late teens, early 20s athletes come in with small but like the injuries that you're saying before the small ones that you don't that we don't think are injuries what are the things that we can do to kind of prevent prevent those and if we do have them to make sure that they heal and we don't make them worse i guess what are the, what are the sorts of things that you recommend or like that you when you get your athletes what do you put them through what kind of like conditioning or training do you put them through so, you know, I have a four-step method that I use, but before I get to that, basically one of the things that I really like uh, doing, I, my, my training system is educational. Mm -hmm. Basically, I educate the athlete, I educate the, the, the client, I educate whoever walks through the doors to sure. really see their body, how they move, how they perform mm -hmm. from the outside, take videos, and basically use mm -hmm. feedbacks. This is an analytic mm -hmm. method that for them to understand okay. how they're moving, right? Sure. Because a lot of times they, they know they move in one way, but they think they're doing it, but slightly they start shifting to a completely different pattern. Right. For instance, now I'm going to go back into teens. Mm -hmm. So if you are a 12 year old athlete with a versus a 15 year old athlete, doing the uh, biomechanical point of stand view and also the physiological point of view, is you're going to go through puberty. Right. You're going to grow. Mm -hmm. You're going to develop muscle. Mm -hmm. They're going to still want to move like if they were 12, but they were also 15 pounds lighter. Right. Also four inches lower. Mm -hmm. So now their joints haven't been developed to move with a higher yeah, amount they, of they weight. They caught up yet. Correct. Right. So the first thing, we have to explore the body. Mm -hmm. Basically, scan their body 
teach them how their body looks like now. Mm -hmm. right. They need to be able to understand dimension and space, mm -hmm. speed and force, mm -hmm. landing acceleration, right. braking system, and also multidirectional movements. Mm -hmm. From the moment they see weaknesses and be able to see those things, when I start doing what we call prehab, basically mm -hmm. giving orientation to an athlete what they should be working on. So right after they understand things that are not able to push off to the left, or they have a stronger push to the right, okay. now you start developing the sport. Now you start making it specific for that. But mm -hmm. As soon as they understand that, we're going to what they call unilateral style training, basically teaching the athlete the right leg or the left leg. If the right side dominant, they're stabilizing with the left. If they're left side dominant, they're going to be stabilizing with the right. right. They've got to be able to stabilize with both. Right. Retrain the brain. Mm -hmm. And the people that haven't done it, we have to train the brain to make sure they're doing the patterns the right way. Mm -hmm. That will teach the nervous system to be confident for whatever movement you're doing. Right. Because if the nervous system is not confident, it's almost like trying to punch a rock with an open fist. Yeah. You're going to smash your fingers against the rock. Right. When you kick a soccer ball, you can't go with a weak ankle to kick no. a soccer ball. No, you have to yourself. lock your ankle and really kick it. Right. But you also have to loosen up that other ankle to be able to rotate. Mm -hmm. So your brain got to be able to do those things. Right. So you got to be able to re reset left to right, right to left. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you go into stability. So... The next is when you go into uh, teens, maybe 15, 16 years old, at that point, a professional athlete is basically fully developed. Right. Now, what you got, the mechanical point of view is basically seeing what muscles are overcompensating and which ones are undertaking the movements. Okay. If some of the muscles are basically not firing for the movement, you're overloading the same muscle. Mm. So you got to be able to balance those out. Right. So how do you go and, and balance balance them out? First, I uh, do a passive assessment. Okay. In this passive assessment, you basically see how the body responds for certain movements, right? Right. And like, it, this can be like a leg raise. Mm -hmm. I mean, are they stabilizing with the back of their core? Mm -hmm. If they're stabilizing with the back, they have to go and reset. They got to be able to stabilize with the core, not with the lower back. Because mm -hmm. they're going to develop orthosis or something in the back that's going to cause a lot of pain. Right. And then we go into, okay, now let's go into a performance movement. This is just a little example, right? And I make them do acceleration point. Mm -hmm. In acceleration point, they're actually using mechanics for a braking system, mm -hmm. which they're using the same muscle to accelerate and decelerate. Right. That will cause an injury because now the muscle is going to get tired. The tendon, mm -hmm. the articulations, and the ligaments are going to take over, and that's going to lead into an injury. They're going to right. overload the joint. Okay. So we have to see how to deload the joint by using the muscles they are supposed to use them to use as a braking system. So is this caused by when they're young, do they get taught improper mechanics or is it just kind of, they don't, the coaches that they have early, like the volunteer coaches, they don't know all the proper things to teach and they learn as their, like their bodies learn as they're developing the wrong thing or is it, or is there a combination of different things that it could be, is it like, yeah, I think it's a combination of things. I'm not trying to step on the coaches or anything, sure, sure, you know, sure. because I mean, you see coaches have 16 kids they're going to work on. It's kind of hard to even just concentrate no, of on course. one session, mm -hmm. so, right? I think it's just the lack of knowledge from the parents. Mm. I'm going to blame that on, as a parent, not knowing what's the best thing for my kid mm -hmm. and also not educating ourselves. Right. But there's also not a lot of research in a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. You're only going to see a lot of those those specific mechanics and understanding of the human anatomy when you move into a competitive sports. Right. And a lot of trainers also have the proper education to be able to coach their athletes. Mm -hmm. They're going to see a movement. Oh, this is going to make you stronger. It's going to make you faster. But wait a second. These people are developing Ferraris to go 100 miles per hour, mm -hmm. but they still use Corolla braking system. Yeah. So they use very weak brake system mm -hmm. with a very strong engine to accelerate and jump. Right. But kids don't know how to stop. How to decelerate and how to land. There you go. Yes, correct. So first thing, if you want to develop something stronger, you got to be able to teach the kids how to stop before you mm -hmm. let them go. 